It was called the Alternative Diploma Program. And we work with 32 students um, in a kind of post-industrial um, mill town, um, which is quite famous actually in American history, uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. And um, uh, these were students facing significant barriers to their education. Um, and we work to re-engage them uh, with yeah, relationship building was core to everything we did. Um, community building, restorative justice, peace circles, youth voice and decision making, um, and uh, just uh, social justice themed curriculum, project based learning, like all the things that I'm passionate about in education. I tried to channel into this into this program. This this is a um, a video that a filmmaker made, um, and he was embedded with the organization for. Um, for two years almost. And so he really got to know the students and um, he made a really a very, a very nice film, um, which I will share. Can you guys see the um, screen? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Except we don't have sound. Yeah, no audio and you might want to full screen it too if you want. So to get sound, you actually maybe stop sharing. And then when you click share at the bottom, there's like a little box um, along the bottom to include sound. To include? So yeah, if you stop your share. Yeah, oh, sorry. And then when you reshare. Yeah. Um, when share you're... sound, share yeah. sound. Exactly. Optimize for video clip. Okay, sorry about that. What is the most romantic love story ever written? Romeo's a serial killer, <laughs> right? Everyone's dying. It's gang violence. The Alternative Diploma Program is a partnership between UTEC and the Lowell Public Schools that enables 32 students who have either dropped out of high school or are at high risk of dropping out of high school to earn their high school diploma. The environment is just so different than Lowell High. You know, Lowell High School is a, it's a good school, um, but it's, it's huge. It has almost 4,000 students. Generally speaking, we have you know, more than 12 people probably in each class, and often quite a bit smaller than that. They often say they felt lost at the high school. It kind of felt like the high school didn't care for what else was going on in your life. They feel what they're studying in school is disconnected from their lives. We try to bridge that and say, you know, no, learning should be relevant to what you care about. We utilize project-based learning, a health class where students are looking at issues of food justice and working on a community garden or a science class, testing the water quality of the Merrimack River. Being able to go out and really experience the science. We want to actually change their perception of learning and what learning can be. That kind of creative side, uh, the less analytical side, is more comfortable for some of these students. I do a, like an art project that includes the math that they're learning. They push you just hard enough that you do it and get it done. You still have fun while you're doing it. That's the push I needed. We've had students that have dealt with housing insecurity. Two students that gave birth to their children while in the program. In that situation, you know, going to algebra class is not the priority. It's putting food on the table. Sometimes in traditional schools, you need to just get through the content and the relationships would come second. Every young person is assigned to a transitional coach, a TC. It can range from going to court, find housing, find a job, anything that they need help with. All you have to do is talk about it with someone. You still get work done, but they also help you with whatever is preventing you from doing it at that time. The young people in ADP, to me, are like incredibly inspiring. My mom passed away when I was 15, and my dad passed away two years ago. It's, it's been tough. The high school was saying, we're just so frustrated with her because she just she doesn't come to school. She just hangs around downtown all the time. The classes were overwhelming, and it wasn't interesting. I skipped all, all the time. And then I come here, and it's a very happy like atmosphere. It's a comfy place where I can express myself and I still get work done. She became very much a part of UTEC and part of ADP, great leadership, always positive. I just don't know if she wants to finish high school at this point. I'm never leaving this place, <laughs> like ever. 
There's a huge focus on community. We're just a big open family. There's not a lot of places where you can go these days where you can find that. Community council meetings once a week. We have talking circles uh, where students have an opportunity to share their story. No one is less or more than another person. Everyone has something different to bring to the table. We have students that wouldn't know each other in a large school and they're in class together. They might be sitting together at lunch. They know each other's stories. Jack is an amazing young person, a great sense of humor. He's someone who has had a long history of behavioral issues. They keep me a little high for fun, I don't even know why. I think he's had a lot of experiences which made him dislike teachers, dislike school, dislike authority. When he's given a genuine leadership role, then he shines. You really don't expect this from school. And the teacher, they treat you like you're an adult. They don't treat you like little kids here. Yeah. I feel like he's trying to balance between him being this funny, goofy kid, trying to separate that and buckle down and do what he needs to do. Fooling around, being the class clown, that's what I am. He's very smart and he's very insightful. I don't think he trusts that everybody feels that way about him. And as a result, he puts up these boundaries. Someone who's tough, not to be you know, messed with. And that's the mask that he's put forward. I feel like deep down, he actually really loves this place. At UTech, we talk about not falling for the mask. That's really all it is. It's just the outward appearance. It's nothing to do with who they are as a person. UTech as a whole, they don't strip that away, but they encourage and support going beyond that. This is a group of society that's been labeled in so many ways, you know, at risk, high risk, or the bad kids. All these expectations that they have of themselves based on failures, quote unquote, that they've had in the past. I know you've had these other experiences and made you feel that way, but I don't, I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. I still believe you could be successful. It's really ironic that somebody would think of them as not as capable because they really knock it out of the park. We have some of the brightest, hardest working young people in Lowell, and we see them as really full of energy, full of intelligence, full of wisdom and experience. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was the one in control of my education. Everyone is equal. Everyone's opinion matters. No one is too different or too dumb or too ambiguous. No one is left behind. I now know I have what it takes to be a strong student and an even stronger member of my community. Almost everything that I once viewed as being impossible, I now know is possible. So thanks for uh, listening to the video. I'm getting a little choked up watching that myself. That was a number of years ago. Um, that was uh, that was a big part of my life uh, for three years, and um, uh, I'm a little choked up there. Um, so I'm just seeing folks that I, young people and colleagues that I worked with um, so closely uh, for so long. Um, you know, uh, that job ended. Um, I resigned from my position when my daughter was born. Um, she was born very prematurely, over three months early. In fact, she's 26 weeker. Uh, one pound, just over a pound. And um, she spent five months in the NICU and uh, came home requiring um, oxygen support and uh, feeding tube and 24 seven pulse oximetry. We were running a, a NICU out of our house. So um, I could not care for my daughter um, and run a high school in Lowell. So I stepped down from that position and um, you guys met Shaq in that um, in that video and um, probably the most touching moment of my entire career was on my last day at UTech. The kid, the young people all knew what I was going through because my daughter had been born three months before I kind of transitioned out of the role and um, they threw a party for me. They threw a going away party for me and uh, the students and um, it was an it was an amazing celebration. And, and at one point during the day, someone said, hey, Shaq was looking for you. Shaq had graduated. And he, he sa uh, they said, Shaq is looking for you. Um, he had to work today, but he wanted to say hello. And I said, OK, I made a note of it. And later in the day, like almost, I was almost about to leave my last day, like 4 o'clock, someone called me and said, Shaq is here to, to say hello. And I went downstairs to the lobby of the building. And um, Shaq, who's like 
very tough kid who we worked with for two years and, you know, uh, ran me ragged <laughs> and we had all these experiences with it. He said, Roy, thank you for everything you did for me. And that was it. And that was probably my proudest moment as a teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, uh, you know, but, but anyway, um, you know, right now, uh, I, uh, I'm no longer in education. I am, uh, probably should have spent a little, had my time a little better. I only have another minute or so, but, um, I'm doing something completely different, which is, um, uh, mostly I'm a dad, but I'm also running a, um, a bookstore, a community owned bookstore, um, called Rosie bound, which is, um, in the process of incorporating as a, uh, cooperative that will be uh, worker owned and consumer owned. We have five worker owners. And we're about, once we incorporate, we'll start recruiting consumer owners for a hundred bucks. You'll, you'll become, you'll own a share in the, in the business. And uh, we want to do more than sell books. You know, I'm a teacher at heart and uh, you know, we see the bookstore as being also a community learning space, community gathering space, workshops, classes. Um, I'd love to do work with youth again. Um, once we're, you know, once we have our feet a little bit underneath us uh, right now, we're just trying to pull it all together. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me. Um, we'll now um, open it up for questions. Um, if you can raise your hand digitally or in your screen. Do you have a question for any of the panelists? Uh, Rebecca. I'm Marie, actually, but I was. Oh, wondering... sorry. No, you're fine. It it says Rebecca. Um, what is the like status of the school now, the program? For you. The alternative diploma program does not exist anymore. Sadly, and it's a long, complicated, political story that. Uh, has partly to do with the fact that I wasn't around to fight for the program um, when we needed to fight for it because my daughter was in the NICU fighting for her life. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do both. And um, we, we were subject to political winds shifting in Lowell, um, unfortunately. And it's a longer story and, and I should probably write it up one day as an article, but um, unfortunately the program does not exist anymore. Um,